If I was to say to you, if you could meet one person and really understand and know who that person was, who would that person be? Now, I know the answer, and I, I understand that the, the whole totality of, of what I'm asking you, but let's name some of them. Just to, Wouldn't you like to know what it was to know what Alfred uh, Einstein or Albert Einstein was to think in and understand everything that he did? Wouldn't you like to know about the Wright brothers and how they first began to develop and understand how that flight was made possible there in uh, North Carolina? Wouldn't you like to know what it was like to be Alexander the Great and have the whole world laid at your feet? Wouldn't you like to know all those things? Well, you know, that's what man searches for. That's what man seeks for. That's what man wants to know. It's because we are an inquisitive being, and God has put us into that in such a way to where we would have an understanding or a yearning to know. Uh, The Bible tells us this, that uh, we have been born to know God. And how do we get to the point to where we can say, God, I want to know you, and how can we get to that point? The Apostle Paul is speaking, he's teaching uh, the Philippian church. And I want to zone in on Philippians chapter number 3. And I'm going to start in verse number 10 in here just a second. But God has wanted you to know him from the day you were born. From the day you were born to the day that you stand today, God has done all these things in your life that you may know that he is God. The Bible tells us in Psalms chapter number 19 that the heavens and the earth were created just so that you could know that God sits in heaven. The Bible tells us this very thing, that everything that was made was made by Christ, and that Christ made these that you may know the Heavenly Father. God wants a relationship with you, and God wants you to truly know Him beyond measure. Now, there's only one person in this world that comes close to that in my life. My wife and I married so many years ago, some 38 years ago, and we thought we knew each other after our engagement. We we were engaged, and just like you guys, we were so in love and and all these things, and we held hands, and we cooed, and we caught, and all those things, and, and it was wonderful, and we wanted to know it. Each other amen she'd ask me what my favorite color was and, and i'd tell her and then she'd change it and tell me what my favorite color really was uh, she would ask me things that i liked things that i disliked and she and i would ask her those things and we we made plans kind of like uh, marissa and lucas in their early marriage they are getting to know each other and they think they know each other pretty good But some of us guys who've been married longer than they're alive, we realize and we look back. And I I want you to know, Lucas, where'd you go, dude? They done raptured out here? Amen. (laughs) Wow, there's a rapture. The baby's gone. But I I want you to know that earlier in your marriage, you think you know your wife? Amen. Come on, Chad, go with me. Amen. We didn't know beans from apple butter, did we, brother? Now, some 30 years later, we know our wives, and our wives know us, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I've got a lot of that in my life. But I want you to know God says that His entire being is that He has sent all of these things in the world so that you could know Him. Joe, if there's anything that you learn at Lee University, it is not all the facts, it is not all the history, it's not all the math, it's none of those things that really matter. It's the one thing that God wants you to know while you're at Lee is to know Him. Wayne, the one thing that you may know beyond your index T medals and all the things you were talking to me about is that you know God. There is nothing more important than your relationship knowing God. Now, pastor, how do you do that? I'm glad you asked. Amen. The Bible tells us this in Philippians chapter number three. It says that I may know him. We're going to preach a sermon this morning, give you three real quick things that is going to solidify your walk with God. It's not anything you do. It's not anything you can get. God has to give it to you. But when God gives it to you, you are going to be on a pathway that is going to be right and righteous, that is going to be good and glorifying to God. Amen? Read with me Philippians chapter number 3 and starting in verse number 10. The Bible says this. It says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto death. If by any means that I have attained 
attain uh, unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. But I follow after, if that I may apprehend, or that I may gain, if I may apprehend that which for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it or understand, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of Jesus, or in Christ Jesus, that I may know Him. Paul writes this to a church, and he is chained between two Philippian jailers. He is chained in the bottom of the dungeon. He has been uh, uh, imprisoned for over two years, and all Paul wants the Philippian church to know is how they can know God. Amen? I want to give you three real quick, simple things this morning, and it's going to change your life if you let it. But first of all, I want you to know that, that if you really want to know God, then you have to have faith in God. The Bible says in uh, Romans chapter number 1, verse number 16, it says that the just shall live by knowledge. No, it doesn't say that. It says that if, uh, if you are going to live justly, then you have to live by what you've got in your pocket, your money, and your material. It never says that. The Bible says that if you will live justly before God, then you have to be someone whose name is known throughout the world. God won't accept you unless the world accepts you. No, it doesn't say that. In Romans chapter number 1, verse number 16, the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. What is faith, Pastor? Uh, this morning, you guys have 100% faith in some things. There's some things that you absolutely have 100% faith in and you demonstrate it every day. Every day, subconsciously and without knowing, you go through these faith steps and you don't even give it a thought. But my friend, every one of you brought this morning 100% faith in many things. Number one, this morning when you got in your car and you cranked it up and you was driving over here, you got up to, some of you got up a little bit faster than others. Amen. Biggest man in the whole building that's got the most faith today is Keith Thompson. Keith's driving pretty fast up the river road, down the river road, over the veil, under the dell. And he's going about 100, right, Angel? And you're saying, Keith, you need to slow down. He said, I got faith. I got faith. Angel looks over at him and says, if you don't slow down, you're going to have hurt. You're going to have hurt. What's Keith got faith in? He's got faith in his brakes. How many of you this morning pushed your brakes when you got to a stop sign? Amen? How many of you come up to the stop sign and you push those brakes and you didn't even think about it, but you are moving over two tons of vehicle at about 50, 60 miles an hour, and all of a sudden you push on your faith. And that faith has never failed you. Well, some of us it has. But you see, we have this inordinate thing that we have faith. And this faith is that we believe in something is going to help us and keep us from harm. Faith is those things that we trust empirically in. Amen. The Bible says here that we need to have faith. Look in verse number 10. In the power of his resurrection. Look in Philippians 3.10. He says, number one, that if you are going to know me, if you are going to know God, then you have got to have faith in the power of His resurrection. The power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the power that allows you to do great and wonderful things. It is the power of the grave empty. It is the power of the blood shed. It is the power that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And that power is 100% proven. It is the most powerful thing in your life because if you ever get behind the cross, if you ever stand in front of the empty tomb, if you ever settle it 100% that Jesus Christ has the power over death, hell, and the grave, then you will have the kind of power that is going to shut the lion's mouth. You're going to have the kind of power that is going to keep you in the time of the fiery furnace. You're going to have the kind of power that you can speak
speak to the sea and it'll move and you'll walk through. If you have the faith and the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you can do all things through Christ Jesus. You can take and no matter what it is coming against you, no matter what it is that is trying to destroy you, no matter what it is that is trying to hold you and bind you and keep you down, if you have the power of faith, Paul said that even the prison doors are going to open before you. And that it, things that are dead are going to be brought new to life. Paul is saying that if you want to know Jesus Christ, you've got to have power and faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the most uh, nuclear thing that's ever happened. Amen? Uh, the most uh, explosive thing in all the world that there's ever been. It is greater than anything man could ever do because man cannot overcome the death. Man cannot overcome the grave. Man cannot roll the tomb back in their sin where they're dead in their trespasses. It's only through faith in the power of Jesus Christ that you can live a life that will let you know God. You know, so many of us today, we try to live a life in our, our mind. We try to know God through education or through facts or through experience or through emotion. And we try to know God in these ways. And they will all fail you because they are all driven and generated within our mind. But if you truly believe the power and faith of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 1.13 that the Holy Spirit will indwell you and give you the power to overcome whatever the situation. I've said it before and it'll be on my tombstone. Amen? I, I want you to know I, the answer is Jesus. Now what's the question? Why? Because only Jesus Come out of the grave. Only Jesus paid my sin debt. Only Jesus spoke life into death. It's Jesus. And the faith in Jesus Christ, Paul says, is in the power of the resurrection. And if you get the power of the resurrection, you are going to be a person that is going to think differently. You're not going to think anymore about how you're going to figure it out. You're not going to think anymore about how you're going to do it. You are going to have faith knowing that if God brings you to it, He's going to bring you through it. Amen? God said that if you will trust me, I will set before you a table that is bountiful. If you will trust me, I will set you upon a path of righteousness. God said that if you will trust me in faith, I will do mighty and wonderful things in you. I'll take an old drunk and I'll make him a preacher. I'll take an old sinner and I'll make him a singer. I'll do these things, but it's got to be through the power of Jesus Christ. You're going to think differently. Amen. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter number 23, it says that out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And I believe today that if you really want to know God, then you have got to have the faith to allow God to make you think differently. Amen. To make you think differently. The Bible said in Philippians 3, 7, it says, but what things were gained to me, those things I count lost for Christ. Amen. I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. What's Paul saying? He said, listen, I once chased fame and fortune. I once chased a religion. I once tried to lift up myself and mankind. But Paul said, listen, I want to tell you, I've changed my way of thinking because all I want to think about is God. All these other things are lost to me. Just tell me about Jesus. Just tell me about my Lord. Just tell me about these things. You will think differently. And if you think differently, you're going to act differently. Amen? Doesn't the Bible say in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, Christ. I like this part. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. 
Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I, what I once was, I'm no longer that. Amen. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was in darkness, but now I stand in the blood and in the light of Jesus Christ. I was once wayward, but praise God now. He set my feet upon a solid rock and set me upon a path of righteousness. He's going, if you think differently, you're going to act differently. And when you act differently, you're going to walk differently. Amen? Jeremiah 6.16 6, says it this way. Thus saith the Lord, stand you in the way and see. Jeremiah said, trust God. Have faith in God. And if you'll stand there, God is going to show you a way. And that way is made from old. In the beginning, God. Amen. In the beginning, Jesus. In the beginning, the Holy Spirit. In the old way, where is the good way to walk therein? I think I can know God because I think a different way. Because I, am, I act a different way. And because I will walk a different way. This is how you know God. Amen. It's through the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number one is your faith. You have got to have faith. Because without faith it is impossible to please God. Without faith... In Jesus Christ, it is impossible to be righteous. You have got to know faith in Christ because faith in Christ does a marvelous work in your life. And when you are that way, you will have Jesus and you will know him. Amen? Number two. Amen? If you want to know Jesus Christ, if you want to know him, amen, you've got to have faith in his resurrection. But number two, You've got to have fellowship in his suffering. Look in verse number uh, 10 again. Philippians chapter number 3, verse number 10. He says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That's faith. Number two is that you have fellowship of his sufferings. It's going to get good here. It's going to get bad for some of you because you're looking for fame and glam. You're looking for uh, a prosperity. You're looking for an easy way. You're wanting life to be easy peasy. You're wanting a smooth way to where you can just do what you want to do and God blesses it and everything's good. There's no rain clouds come down. There's no trouble in your life. There's no trials in your life. You want that easy life. This isn't for you. You'll never know God. Amen. You'll never know God. If you want an easy life, you'll never know God. Every one of us here this morning, we come in and we're going to moan and complain and we're going to whine and we're going to do all these things because we had a rough day yesterday. And my God, we had a rough day yesterday. Amen, Karen? But I want to tell you, amen, it's the faith in Jesus that He's put us on this path and we're walking this path that God is overwatching. And so therefore, if we have to walk through a valley or if we have to climb a mountain, if we have to fight to the left and to the right, then we should praise the Lord because if you want to know God, you have got to be in fellowship with His sufferings. Amen? He, the Bible says that he didn't even have a place to lay his head. The Bible says that he had nothing upon him, that he was poor and destitute, and he lived his entire life from here to there, and he had no big mansions. He had no big titles. He had no big fame. It is through the fellowship of his sufferings. It's very clear that if you want to know God, you better get in the game. The Bible tells us this. You know, there's so many Christians that want to live on the cruise ship of life. The good ship lollipoppy. Amen? You guys want to be sailing with a little boat drink in your hand and a Jamaican band of play it, man. All right, amen. Ah, oh, Margarita. You know, we want to just smooth it out. We just want to ride it out. We just want to kick back. We want to live, right? God, do what you can for me to make my life easy. And we all live on this cruise ship mentality. But my friend, the Bible is very clear that we are to uh, have part in the fellowship of His suffering. So everybody wants to be on a cruise ship. But the Bible tells us that we're actually on a battleship. Amen? I mean, come on, guys. 
We're on a rough sea and we're looking for the enemy and we're going to fight. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 2, it says, as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we should endure the trials and suffering of a soldier. Amen. I want you to know today, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.12, Yea, and look at that word, all, and all that will live godly shall suffer persecution. Amen. You need to get over your Joel Osteen. You need to get over, amen, C-Flow dollar bill. You need to get over all these guys that are telling you that if you'll do this and you'll do that, you're going to have a better life now. My friend, I want to tell you what. The greatest person that's ever lived that had blood within him and man's flesh was the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul, he took a beating in every city that he went to. He had trouble. He had trials. He had all the people were against him. In fact, every city that he ever went into, they either put him in prison, they beat him, or they throw him out in the street. And my friend, Paul said this, Amen, I've finished my fight. I've finished my course. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Paul said, all those that will live godly shall suffer persecution. So if you want to know who God really is, You have got to have faith. And in the faith, you have got to accept that you're going to have a fellowship of suffering. Amen? You are going to do it. You cannot wear a crown. You can't do it. You can't wear a crown and be a son of the king. You can't wear his crown unless you're willing to carry his cross. You can't do it. You can't be on the good side and then reject the bad. My friend, you have got to understand that God says that you are to be purified and that you are to be tested and that you are to walk through this valley of sorrow at times. And my friend, all these things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose that my friend oftentimes God loves you so much he won't leave you in the chair of leisure he will get you up and march you into the valley before giants and he's going to tell you you got to stand in faith pick up a rock son and throw it at the giant amen we live in a world today where everybody and their brothers believed that it's supposed to be smooth it's supposed to be easy supposed to be good amen amen god's got enough parade soldiers he needs some combat soldiers he needs men and women that'll go into the highways into the hedges he needs men and women that will get into the dirty trenches of the life and he will find those that are lost just like jesus looked for the 90 and 9 in the mountains and in the valleys and in the times of torture and in the times of trial and in the times of storm the good shepherd went out and found them he had to suffer those things i want to tell you you're not going to wear a crown in glory You can't carry a cross on this earth. Look what Luke 9, 23 says. It says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Oh, that hurts, preacher. Let him deny himself and pick and take up his cross and follow me. God is asking you, drop that hobby. Drop that habit. Drop that high and haughty spirit and reach down and grab a lonely towel in a basin and go out there and get your hands dirty. Amen. Get tired in the service of the Lord. Get oppressed by the battles of life. It is that we are to set and deny ourselves and pick up the cross of Christ. First Peter 4.14 says it this way. It says, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. Man, I don't like that passage. I almost left this one out because that one stuck under my cross. That one made me mad. That one upset me. Amen. God, don't you know what I sacrificed for you? Don't you know what I've given up for you? God, don't you know all the things that I have pushed aside so that I would get closer to you and that I would know you closer? And that I... God says, listen, don't, don't play with me. If you are really after me in faith, then you are going to have the fellowship of suffering. And the fellowship of suffering is going to bring reproach in the name of Jesus Christ. If you name the name of Christ, you are going to be persecuted. But Paul said, don't get beat up about it. 
Peter writes to us, don't get down about it. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to be happy. That's a hard one for me. For the spirit of glory and of God will rest upon you. Amen. I would rather have the spirit of God within my life than to have all the spirit of the world because the world is wicked and the world is going away from God. If I could just have the spirit of God. There was a little boy who had a mentor. Elijah had been mentoring Elisha. And there they were on the plains of Sharon. And Elijah was about to be called up. And Elisha, he looks over and he says, don't leave me. Don't leave. Elijah looks at him and says, but what would it be that you ask of me before I leave? Elijah wanted to give something to Elisha because he knew he was about to leave. Elisha could have asked for anything and he would have received it. But the Bible tells us that Elisha whispered to Elijah, give me a double portion of your spirit. My God, if I have to live in a shack off the side of the road, if I have to be to where I don't know whether my meal is going to be today, tomorrow, I, if I, but to have the Spirit of God rest upon you, that is what it's all about. If you want to know God, you have got to have faith and you've got to have the fellowship of His sufferings. Second Timothy 2 says it this way, if we suffer... If you're, if you're close to God, you're going to suffer. If you suffer, we are also going to reign with Him. And if we deny Him, He's going to deny us. But if we suffer, He is going to reign and we reign with Him. You see, I'm not in it for today. My home is in heaven. My reward is in heaven. My riches are in heaven. All the good things are in heaven. And if I have in my 63 years, I've got another 20 maybe. In 20 more years, if I have to live destitute, if I have to live off the side, if I have to live just hand to mouth, if I have to live that, 20 years ain't nothing to 10,000 years where we'll be praising Him and saying glory, glory. My friend, I want to tell you today, it's worth it. Walk with God. It may be a little hard today, but the treasure in heaven is waiting for you. Romans 8 says this. It says, Romans 4, I reckon not. Paul says, I reckon not. I reckon not that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Paul says, I've lost it all. I've given it up for all. But he said, I count it all as dung that I can reckon that one day I'm going to be reported. Last thing, and then I'll close this thing up. You want to know God? Have faith. Number two, you want to know God? You've got to have some fellowship of his sufferings. But number three, you've got to have focus. You've got to have focus in your life. Look in verse number 13. The Bible says this in Philippians 3.13. It says, but I count, brethren, I count not myself too apprehended, but this one thing I do. He said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before. He says this, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. My friends, so many people living their lives in their rearview mirror. Oh, I wish I could go back there. I wish I could have this. I wish I could have that. And so many people are looking back. And if you're looking back, you don't see what's before you. And Paul said... I press towards the mark or towards the prize of Jesus Christ. So if you're looking back, you're looking at the world. But if you'll turn around, you'll see that Jesus Christ is always, be, say it, always before you. He's not behind you. He's before you. He leadeth the way. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil because he leads the way. Paul said this, in Deuteronomy, Moses writes this in Deuteronomy 4. 
He says, Thou shalt seek the Lord thy God. Thou shalt find him if thou shalt seek with him with all the heart. You know what the problem is? You try to be a friend of Christ and a friend of the world. You try to hold the hand of the world and hold the hand of the one that made the world. You try to walk that middle ground. You try to be in the middle. And the Bible says, seek you this day. It says, choose you this day who you're going to serve. God doesn't play second fiddle. He doesn't share your life. He doesn't want to take a back seat to anybody, including you. So if you're really going to know God, you are going to have to seek Him with your entire and whole heart because it is with your whole heart that you have to search for Him. Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen says, You shall seek for Me and you shall find Me when you shall search for Me with all your heart. You have got to be focused on Jesus Christ. Look in verse number 13. Brethren, he said, I, I count all this stuff. I don't, I don't understand it all. But the one thing I do is that I am going to let go of things behind me and reach forth into the things which are before me, and I'm going to move towards Jesus Christ. I want to ask you this morning, be real honest with yourself. How focused are you in knowing Jesus Christ? How focused are you in knowing Jesus Christ? The Bible says this in James, in James chapter number 4. Amen? It says that if you will seek me, you will find me. How much of God have you found? As much as you sought for, amen? Just like Moses in the wilderness, he'll reveal himself to you. Just like Paul on the road to Damascus, he will reveal himself to you. Just like John on the Isle of Patmos, he will reveal himself to you. But he's not going to do it if you turn your back on him and go after the things of the world. He's telling you that you need a focus for Christ. Now, how do you get a focus for Christ? It goes back to the beginning. You've got to have faith in Christ. Amen? Just like those breaks that you used this morning, why don't you lean on Christ more and more? Instead of seeing what the world's doing and imitating the world, why don't you find out what God's doing in your life and doing it for Him? Tony, come on, get ready, buddy. In faith, faith is what moves mountains. It doesn't make it easy to move mountains. It doesn't make it timely to move mountains. But God said that he will move mountains in faith. The faith as a grain of a mustard seed can do mighty things. How much faith do you have that Jesus Christ was resurrected? You say, Pastor, I, I truly believe that Jesus was resurrected. Do you really? Because Paul said in Philippians 3.10 that if you have the power of the resurrection that is driving you, you are going to have the faith to know Christ in, in His goodness and His grandeur, but also that you are going to be one that has fellowship in His suffering. Right now, you're looking to make your life better. Amen? When I say better, you're, you're working on, um, Joe, maybe a college degree. Some of us older ones, we're trying to get our 401s lined up. We're trying to get our houses paid for. Some of you are wanting a new car. All these things, those is, that's where our focus is. There's nothing wrong with those things, but they better be behind your relationship with God rather than in front of your relationship with God. Amen? This church would be full with all the people that could be here but chooses not to be because they have got focused on something else. Amen? They've got focused on something else. Your focus this morning is going to direct your feet. Where your eyes go, your feet go. Amen? What are you focusing on? I want you to stand on your feet real quickly. And I'm going to ask you a question this morning. Do you know God? Do you know Him? I'm not talking about do you, do you know Him in your mind. I'm talking about in your heart. Does not James chapter number 2 says that even the devils in hell believe and doth tremble? They know God. But they don't know Him in their heart. Because if you truly love something in your heart, it will shape your entire life. And it will change you. And it will give you a sense of gratitude. Would you bow your head with us, please? Father, we thank you. Go, Tony. Well, all my words fall short. Well, I got nothing new. You want to come this morning? 
You want to know God better? How could I want to invite I you to come. Spread. I'll be standing right here in front of this altar. You and I will pray about it. I'll All show you gratitude. what God has required of you. If you'd like to come right now. Well, you I know Jesus. Sing these songs. It's your faith in Jesus Christ. As I often do. But if a song must end. So I throw up my hand.